Good morning and greetings from the Northern Baptist Association team. Today, Sunday the 13th of September, is the date of the Great North Run. This year, it's a virtual Great North Run. And we are going on the run. And considering what it is to run the race of life in following Jesus Christ. And we've got some contributions today from people who are runners or whose faith connects with the exercise of running. Let's pray as we begin our time together today. Lord God, you call us to run the race, to fight the fight and to keep the faith. Help us today to know what that means for each one of us, to follow you faithfully with perseverance, endurance, with discipline, with courage. And Lord, may you give us strength for our journeys, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I run with purpose in every step. I am not 
not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Run by my side, live in my heartbeat, give strength to my steps, as the cold surrounds, as the wind pushes me, I know you surround me, as the sun warms me, as the rain cleanses me, I know you are touching me, challenging me loving me. And so I give you this run, my life's race. Thank you for matching my stride. Amen. Hi, my name is John Weston. I'm a pioneering minister working for the South Eastern Baptist Association down in Kent. And currently I'm busy transforming uh, an empty shop into a church plant in the form of a coffee shop and bakery. I'm also a trustee of BMS World Mission. And to relax, I run. That might sound a little crazy, especially when I tell you that the running I do most often tends to be long and ideally up hills. I've completed 14 marathons to date and was due to be running the New York Marathon this year until, like so many events, including the Great North Run, it fell foul of the coronavirus pandemic. At 26.2 miles, a marathon is far from the longest race that I've run. I've completed ultras such as the country to capital, the classic quarter around the south west coast path and the Harp 24. That's a, a race uh, which was a two-man relay uh, in which my son and I ran a combined total of 126 miles in 24 hours. The longest race that I've run alone is the Round the Island, a 72 mile jaunt around the Isle of Wight in which I finished fifth overall and first veteran over 50 in 13 hours and 19 minutes. Why do I do such things? For many reasons, the most basic of which is that I enjoy it. I delight in the sense of freedom, of life, that I get running over the downs near my current home. I have to confess that I'm a bit competitive and I enjoy running fast. I do consider it a real privilege, a gift that well into my fifties I am fit enough to run up hills fast. At different times I appreciate running for different reasons. When I'm training alone I often find it's a good time to reflect on things, to spend time in prayer, perhaps bringing needs, people to God, maybe listening for God's wisdom for a tricky situation that I'm facing, or sometimes simply being aware of God's presence, his breath in my lungs, the beauty of his creation. At the moment I miss uh, running with my club, 
sharing the pain. Yes, running is hard work. So sharing the pain with someone is an effective way of building relationship. There is time to listen to others and when appropriate to share something of the love of Jesus. Perhaps simply through offering to pray for someone when they tell you that a family member is in hospital. In my first running club I was nicknamed John the Baptist. I think that was a positive thing. At least they didn't chop my head off. <laughs> Most of all, for me, running is a reminder of God's grace. Yes, to run I do have to do my part, to put on my running shoes, to go out of the front door, to put one foot in front of the other. And yet ultimately I can only do it because of all that God has done in the first place. Whether it's designing human beings so that our lungs can absorb oxygen and our hearts pump it to our calf muscles. Or whether it's that personally I haven't succumbed to persistent Achilles tendonitis after years of punishing my body. As Eric Liddell said in the film version of Chariots of Fire at least, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Here we are with some guests and it's a great privilege to have today with us Penny Marsh and David Golding. And as you can see, so we're wearing our, our running t-shirts. I've got my virtual Great North <laughs> Road, Penny's got hers, uh, and David has his as well. So let's find out about who these uh, special people are. So Penny, tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you? Uh, where are you based and what are you doing? Okay, well, it's um, really nice to be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm Penny Marsh, and I work for the Southeastern Baptist Association as a pioneer minister in Ebbsfleet, which is a healthy new town. Um, and I've uh, got New Garden City, and I also support the pioneers who are working in the Southeastern Baptist Association too. Thank you. And David? So I'm uh, David Golding, a retired but non-retired member of staff at Newcastle University, and also a member since, dear me, it's an awful long time ago, um, uh, 1968 of Whitley Bay Baptist Church on Tyneside. And uh, David, you, you've done a lot of work uh, with uh, uh, campaigning for uh, debt relief and uh, uh, for, for awareness of climate change and responded to that as well. And we'll, we'll hear more about that in a moment, I'm sure. So, so you both have an interest in running like me. Mm -hmm. You both have a connection uh, with the Great North Run. So again, we'll start with you, Penny. Tell, tell us about your interest in running and, and, and also how you see running as, as being transformational and what's your connection with the Great North Run? Oh, great. Well, my connection is I got a ballot place for this year. So I was really excited and looking forward to coming up and doing an iconic race, as it were. But of course, it's all been um, postponed at the moment. So I have done the Great North Run solo. Um, so I've just completed 40 runs in 78 days and looking forward to getting my medal. Um, but I came to running quite late. Um, when we were doing a sponsored event, a friend said to me, are you going to run 5K? And this was about four years ago. I was in my 50s. I was like, no, couldn't. Don't like running. Hate people who run. Never. I was useless at PE and all of that. And she said, wouldn't it be amazing if we did? And we're like, hmm, wouldn't it? So we did 5K. Then we did park runs. Then we did 10K. Then we did half marathons. And I guess now for me, um, running has become an important part of my life. It's something that I kind of gets me going in the morning and I've just found the wider benefits of it have been huge so yeah I'm pretty one of those crazy boring running people now but I love it and we've also been able to use that missionally as well but certainly in terms of my own well-being I've seen a huge impact and it's just helped me I think connect a bit more with God as well at times I was more of a prayer walker than someone who finds it easy to sit still so I find it's a good time to pray listen to worship music or whatever um, and actually process talks often park runs great for practicing the sunday talk that 30 <laughs> minutes or so just gives me enough time to clear my head 
so yeah lots of benefits and i'm a bit of a running fanatic now thank you there's a parallel to me i didn't start running till i turned 50 and uh, a similar journey to yourself so mm. you worked your way up presumably you'll be doing marathons before long and then ultra marathons uh, uh, I'm never an ultra. I have said I'd like to do one one marathon before I'm 60, but I look at all that training and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure I'll ever get there. <clears throat> so David, likewise, tell us a bit more about your connection with the Great North Run and uh, uh, how you see that opportunity of that partnership as, as transformational. Yes, well, um, I'm a complete contrast to Penny, and indeed, I think perhaps to you, Paul, because I'm a walker and in my youth a mountaineer I might say and I've never been any good at running but uh, in the year 2000 and 2001 I took a leading role in the relaunch of Jubilee Debt campaign which had been Jubilee 2000 uh, the campaign to cancel third world debt uh, and I was elected uh, as a founder member uh, of the board of trustees in March 2001, uh, someone said something, I won't quote it in full, something said something about better to have you on the inside, David, than on the outside. Uh, you probably know the quotation. Um, and of course, the campaign had very little money with the relaunch and everything had run down, uh, 2000 was starting off. So I thought I'd use my position at Newcastle University and the support of the vice chancellor, which I had there, and the staff and student unions to recruit a team for the run, for the Great North Run, to raise money for Jubilee Debt Campaign and other agencies working to curb extreme poverty and climate change. And last year, 2019, was the 17th year I've organised a team and the cumulative total we've raised over the years topped 250,000 last year, which was of course a great, great joy. Uh, I did the run once, in 2000. Yeah, you're just spring chickens at this. I did the run once for the first and last time in 2010 to, as I put it, celebrate my 70th. Yes, and I did get round and there were 15,000 people behind me. Um, uh, um, well done. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but point to be made, this, uh, I'm an honorary chaplain uh, of the university. This is on the bottom of all my emails. Tens of thousands of people read my stuff yeah, time, various times of the year because they're all put out because of the support of the Vice Chancellor. So I, I do believe it gives the, uh, the Christian community uh, some good profile. Um, apart, of course, from the, the value of the, I'd like to say about the value of what we've been doing very briefly at some stage. Thank you. And, and uh, as somebody who's run the Great North Run three times now, I'm just aware that, that there are churches along the route that are part of the support, that, that, that give out uh, um, oranges and jelly babies and bottles of water and cheer you and clap you, yeah. uh, along with many others. And, and it's just fantastic to see the Great North Run and, and these other big mm. uh, participation events as opportunities for transformation. So many people raising money for good causes. It's always very moving for me to see people with... Uh, medical charities on their sh shirts and they say I'm raising money for so-and-so and you know there's a bereavement or a loss or somebody who's in, in mm. extreme uh, need uh, so it's always very moving isn't it to to, yeah. to be part of this kind of event. Um, so Penny you've said a bit about how, how running connects with your faith and, and sermon preparation what have you but you also have um, a, a missional outreach that involves uh, running so tell us a bit about that. Yeah, well, we were in Ed Street thinking we've got a blank sheet of paper. How can we help make disciples and just become a Christian community in the community and engage with people who wouldn't perhaps normally come to church? So there was a lot of emphasis on it being a healthy new town. Lots of things about living a healthy lifestyle. And at the same time, God had brought together four of us who loved running somebody who was a fitness instructor and had lots of equipment and was a Christian and a trainee minister and somebody else who was a healthy walk leader and a couple of people who were great at hospitality. So we thought, nah, something here, we could do something around health and fitness. But I realized that nobody was talking about spiritual health. And I thought, that's our key. That's something we can bring to the table. So we've said we will do this 
thing and we will focus on spiritual health from a Christian perspective because we're a church and that's what we know. Um, so we, yeah, we do this thing where we have been doing on Sundays where we meet at nine and there's a choice of a hit class, the running group or walk or just simply come for coffee. Then we all pile back at 10 a.m have breakfast together and that flows into a short interactive talk that's very geared at people who maybe have no faith or haven't been you know Christians for Wonderful. a while um, and then so it's very communal which has obviously meant we've had to adapt strongly and we're still working out how we do that in our COVID times but it has been really lovely because the people who are connecting with us um, many of them don't have faith but they are engaging and that's been great and we've done a couch to 5k and that's probably one of my biggest thrills is seeing people who didn't know if they could but wanted to give it a go because I think if I can run then anybody can and also that kind of starting small and building up is a principle that kind of a lot of this stuff really flows into Christianity so I guess our key verse is John 10 10 Jesus said he came that we would have life in all its fullness and we want to incorporate the whole of life into what we do as a Christian community here wonderful thank you very much and I know we've got a running theme uh, this time, but, but those who are watching, you might just wonder how your interests and your passions can be expressed mm. in mission, how you can connect with others, um, because there will be a spiritual dimension to all the things that, that we, we, we take pleasure in and, and find help, healthy and helpful. Um, so, so thanks, Penny. Uh, David, any, any last word from you? Uh, anything that you want to say uh, regarding uh, the things that you're passionate about uh, that, that connect with the Great North Run? I want to say something about how this relates to my faith. By the way, I, for the last 10 years, I've organised a, a service on the eve of the Great North Run in St Thomas's Church, um, a, a service of Christian worship, which everyone's free to come to, for our supporters and also for the runners. Uh, not many runners have come, but we've nevertheless had some good, good speaking. I've done it. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Now, how does this relate to my faith? I can't say, I say to myself every day, Jesus would want me to do this, you know, um, uh, though I, I do believe that. Um, I think a major influence on me, major motivation, is my sense of immense gratitude to God for the wonderful life he's given to me uh, and my desire to respond appropriately. And so uh, in consequence of that, uh, to use the phrase, um, I, sure, I scorn delights and, li uh, and live laboriously every day um, and so on, uh, this sort of stuff. And thing. I do want to say something about uh, transformational change, which can result simply when you take the opportunities that are at hand. I said how the opportunities are ahead. Now, Jubilee Debt Campaign secured the cancellation of 150 billion US dollars by its work. We're still going strong. Um, despite the minuscule uh, scale of its budget. This is what President Ellen Sir, Sir Leif, uh, Johnson Sirloif, Sirleaf, the, the elected president of Liberia said about uh, first elected woman president in the continent, by the way, she said, let me commend and applaud the tremendous work you are doing. Our country is an example of how international debt cancellation advocacy, such as yours can truly move mountains. And in 74 of the poorest countries, child mortality has reduced, been reduced by over two thirds. Um, so progress is without precedent in human history. Of course, the current crisis will have set things back. We don't know how badly, but it will have done. But nevertheless, that progress is astonishing. I do have a sense of immense blessing of God on our work that debt relief has had a significant contribution to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so whatever it is, um, you know, these, these, taking the opportunities as they arise, just depending on your position, can be, can be very good and very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you both of you for joining us today. Uh, let me pray for you and your continuing work. Uh, and uh, may you know God's blessing in the walking and the running. Uh, and the journey each day as you follow Christ. So Lord God, we thank you that uh, you've called Penny and David to serve you in these wonderful ways. Thank you for the difference that you are making through them and their ministries uh, amongst the world's poorest, amongst those who uh, uh, are finding faith 
in uh, the Ebsfleet area and we ask that you will continue to equip them and use them well uh, and that their ministries will grow and expand and that more and more people will be influenced by their lives and examples. May your blessing be upon them and their work this day and onwards. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you both so much for being with us today. Really appreciate it. God bless you both. Good morning. It's good to share with you today. As you're watching this, particularly if it's on Sunday morning, while you're watching this video, I will be out on the pathways of the Tyne Valley running a half marathon, the virtual Great North Run. This is Great North Run weekend, as we've said, uh, and uh, I want us to think for a moment about some of those parallels between running in a long distance race and following Jesus in the race, in the journey of life. I'm going to start by reading some words to you from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So, five years ago, I turned 50. I know it's hard to believe I'm that old, but yes, it's true. And I put it out on social media that I uh, wanted some challenges. I wanted to be able to do some things while my body still had a bit of life left in it before I no longer was able to do the things I might want to do. And got various suggestions. And one friend uh, suggested that I should enter the Great North Run and raise money for Christian aid. Well, I'd never run before. My own experience of running had been as a teenager, one cross-country run at school where I got so far behind uh, and I didn't know the course as it was my first uh, time doing this particular activity that I got lost. So it wasn't a very auspicious start. But anyway, I thought, well, I'm up for a challenge. And so I entered the Great North Run in 2015. Uh, the run happens every September. And come January that year, I thought, right, let's see whether I can actually do it. <laughs> uh, and, and I went out for a training run. I did one mile. And I was absolutely dead. It killed me. At the end of that, I thought, there's no way I can do 13 miles. It's well beyond me. One mile is, is too much. But I persevered. I, I kept training. I went out the next week and the week after. And gradually, I found two things. Firstly, I was able to do slightly longer distances each time and get a bit fitter and get a little bit faster. Not very fast, I would hasten to add, but, you know, I could do it. And the second thing is I found I enjoyed it and I actually wanted to keep on going. Well, the writer to the Hebrews gives an image of something like a Great North Run, of athletes in a stadium being cheered on by spectators and encouraging the runners, the people following Jesus, to keep going and making sure they make it to the end. And I want to encourage you today to make sure you make it to the end of the life that Jesus wants you to live. That you don't give up, that you don't fall by the wayside, that you don't maybe uh, fail to fulfil the calling that Jesus has in your life. That you're like a, an athlete who keeps going to the very end of the games. How do we do that? What do we need? First thing we need is discipline. It takes discipline to run a race. I had to train by going out two or three times a week. I had to eat the right things, particularly in the days leading up to the run itself. I have to make sure I'm not carrying excess weight as far as possible, which is why I'm such a fit 
lean, healthy person that you see before you today. And we have spiritual disciplines to help us on that journey of following Jesus. Regular prayer, reading the scriptures, meditating on the scriptures, taking time in solitude and silence to be with God, fasting, some forms of self-denial, the discipline of worship with others. There are so many spiritual disciplines which help us. And like running disciplines, like athletic disciplines, training, uh, they're not an end in themselves. They are a means to an end. The end is to get to know God, to be closer to God, to hear the voice of God, to, to, to be better able to follow. I wonder what spiritual disciplines are part of your life and what spiritual disciplines you might need to keep going. We also need companions on the journey. In the Great North Run, uh, it's wonderful to see runners sometimes running with their trainer, who's clearly coached them through all the training uh, period and is then running with them alongside them through the race, encouraging them on every step. And you need that because there are times in a long distance race when you do feel like giving up. You have to overcome the internal uh, uh, thoughts that are saying, no, no, stop, stop, stop. This is too bad. This is too painful. I cannot keep going. It's too much. But having other people to cheer you on, having that crowd of witnesses, having other people alongside you. And, and the writer of the Hebrews says, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus who's gone that race before us, who's endured the cross, who's gone through things far worse than you and I will ever have to do, even in a coronavirus pandemic. He's done it. And he's also that one alongside us to give us the energy and the strength to keep on going. So if you're going through tough times, who are those around you who can encourage you? And who can you encourage and get alongside to encourage on this journey. We're made, meant to disciple and to encourage and support one another in the Christian journey. Who are those that you know who are in danger of falling away from faith? I can think of people I know. And I want to get alongside them and encourage them and just help them at this, particularly these times when they might be tempted to just give up. And another image is to Pass on the baton of faith. Hebrews 12 follows on from, obviously, Hebrews chapter 11. Surprise, surprise. There's a therefore at the beginning of this passage, which means we need to look back and see what's just gone before. What's gone before is, is a list of heroes of faith, of Abraham, of Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Enoch, Gideon, the prophets, all these people who have run the race of faith have done amazing things, have kept going because of the things offered to them in the future, the prize that awaits them. And they've handed on the baton, if you like, to us. So we're now running this race. And they're now in the stands cheering us on. I wonder who gave you that baton of faith, who shared faith with you and brought you into this race? But more importantly, who are you sharing faith with? Who are you handing the baton on to? Who's that next generation that you and your church are discipling and seeking to grow into faith? Every Christian church should be always looking at the next generation of sharing faith with them and bringing them into the faith and handing over the baton to them. For many of us, it's time we handed over that baton. We need to be discipling other people and bringing them into this race. Who are those people for you? Pray about them. And remember that we do have support and encouragement, not just from those around us, but even those who've gone before us. The inspiration of examples of others. Who are those who lived the Christian life well, who you would draw inspiration from at this time? May God give you the perseverance to keep going, the faith to pass on and the joy of knowing that wonderful, wonderful things in Jesus Christ yet await you. What you've received now is just a tiny bit. One day you will receive the price at the end of the journey. You will finish and you will have that well done 
good and faithful servant. Don't lose sight of what it's all about. Don't get distracted with temporary things or unimportant things or things that are ultimately hindrances. Keep your eyes focused on what really matters. Give yourself to Jesus and his kingdom and all that he has to offer you. Pray in his name. Amen. Let's finish just with an imaginative exercise. I want you to imagine you are in a long distance race, that your Christian journey is like a beginner race. Think about where you are. Are you near the start? Are you somewhere halfway through? Are you near the end of the journey? Think of some of the milestones along the way, the markers, the key moments in your journey. Who are the people who are running the race with you? Who are your companions? And who are those who are encouraging you, but also that God would call you to get alongside and encourage? Who are those who are cheering on from the sidelines, the heroes, the inspirations, maybe people from your own Christian community who've lived that Christian life and are now with the Lord, who are cheering you on? And who would you pass that baton on to? Who are the people that God is calling you to share your faith with, to disciple, to, to draw into the race and enable them to get involved? And just imagine them joining the race. And imagine yourself getting to that finishing line, receiving the prize the embrace, the well done, of receiving all the good things that lie ahead. And ask God to keep that in your mind as the inspiration to keep going and to share this wonderful life with others. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, Thank you so much for your faithfulness to us in these difficult times. We pray right now for our churches across the nation that with your help there will be healing and rejuvenation. We pray for our schools, our colleges and universities. We pray for the teachers facing a new way of teaching and educating our young people through this extremely difficult period. The threat of COVID has not gone away and is a major factor in this new reality of education. We have a duty of care to our children's future and their teachers deserve our prayers and support. Please God, intervene to protect them from the stresses and the pressures they face. We pray for those who are developing a vaccine to fight this pandemic. And we ask that you give them a clear direction and foresight in their research. O oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on our leaders, that they might have clarity of mind for the way forward. We so need your love to help fight our selfish nature. We ask that you make yourself known to those who are facing a job loss. As we come towards the end of the furlough scheme, Please breathe your amazing protection into those folks who are completely at a loss for their future. Father, we believe there is no limit to your love and graciousness. You've given us an enduring spirit to stay on course during all the chapters of our lives. You run alongside us and help us to throw off those things that weigh us down. We need your power to help us get to the finishing line and receive the eternal rewards the race promises. We ask that you help keep our eyes focused on Jesus. It's not the one who runs the fastest, nor the one who runs for only a short while, but it's the one who endures to that finishing tape that will be saved. We ask for your amazing love and support help us win the prize. Amen.
As we come to share communion, you may want to take a moment, stop the video and uh, prepare yourself some bread and some wine, or if not wine, maybe some fruit juice or even squash. We are in extraordinary times and such times require us to do things in extraordinary ways, in ways that we wouldn't do normally. So we take bread and we drink in memory of Jesus. In any kind of race, whether it's a long race like the Great North Run or even longer like the Marathon, or in a, a car race, there will be means of refreshment. In the Great North Run, it's normally taken on the run. Of course, in the uh, uh, car racing, uh, then there's a pit stop. We run the race with our eyes fixed on Jesus, the race of faith. And we need rest, refreshment and renewal. And Jesus recognised that when he said, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Or again when he said, come to me, all of you, who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. And so we come in a particular way to focus upon Jesus who said, do this in memory of me. We're drawn back to Jesus as we do so to recall his life and know that he is with us now by his spirit. To recall the events, to recall the events of the cross and resurrection and in remembering to engage in his reality for he who walked the earth is with us by his spirit and we, we meet with him. We are united in him. Even though we're in our different places, we are united in him. And so we come to be strengthened by him, to be refreshed by him. As we take bread and as we drink and do so in memory of, of him who gave his life for us. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So let's prepare our hearts as we come to hear familiar words and take bread and wine. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so with our simple act of bread and of wine, we give thanks to God. Loving God, we thank you for this bread and for this wine and for all that it means to us, all that it symbolises to us. We thank you for the ways that you nourish us physically. But we thank you too for the nourishment that we find spiritually. Particularly as we take this bread and drink this wine. And do so in a particular way, remembering Jesus. Of his body broken for us. His blood poured out for us. His body broken that we might be made whole. His blood shed that we might be forgiven. Redeeming God, we worship you, we thank you, and pray that as we take this bread and as we drink, you would indeed meet with us as we focus our hearts and our minds upon you. And in the eating and the drinking, we may be refreshed in our faith, strengthened for the journey. 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we simply take our bread and we break it and hold it for a moment. And then with thanksgiving in your heart, we eat in remembrance of him. And then we take the cup again to drink in memory of Jesus. Hold it for a moment. Think of Jesus, his blood shed for us, his life given that we might have life. And drink with thanksgiving. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us this Sunday. We hope you've been inspired and helped and encouraged and finish this time together even more determined to keep going, to run your race, to follow Jesus and to be faithful to him. Let's pray as we finish. We thank you, Jesus, that the things you call us to, the life you call us to, the race you call us to, is not beyond our power. And we thank you that you give us strength each day to follow this race. May your blessing be upon us this day and every day. Your blessing of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Just to say as we finish, I'm running the virtual Great North Run this day to raise money for Christian aid for their work in the world's poorest communities, particularly helping alongside the most vulnerable as they uh, are most deeply affected by the coronavirus pandemic. If you'd like to sponsor me and support their work, there's a link at the end to my Just Giving page. But there are many other good causes that you can support that are helping alleviate poverty at this time. Let's not just run the race for ourselves, but for others, that many others may benefit as well. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>